We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180. There was a recent movie that uh, I can't recommend enough called Waiting for Superman. It told the story of education in America. And one of the chapters, for those of you that uh, saw the movie, showed this building in New York City where they have teachers that are not fit to teach. They don't fire them. They just sit around, read the newspaper, and draw a paycheck. And recently, the state made a deal with the teachers' union, and you won't believe what's going to happen to these teachers. To talk about that and his organization, Education in Action, and his film, A Tale of Two Missions, we have Kyle Olson on the phone. Kyle, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Hi, thanks for having me. Kyle, saw you on Fox and Friends the other day, and I, I couldn't believe the story. I, I just, I, I, I had to get you on the air to talk about this. It, that, it, it's incredible. It is, um, and, and the story is that, so school districts around the country and, and states are creating these uh, meaningful evaluation programs uh, for their teachers. And the reason I say meaningful is because um, a lot of school districts have been, have been evaluating teachers, but what's been happening is it typically is not worth the paper it's printed on because if someone has tenure and they get a, a poor evaluation, well, that, that's not grounds for dismissal, and so there's really nothing that can be done. And so uh, administrators typically just go through the motions um, where they, they do, you know, a, just kind of a, a pathetic evaluation. But now as states from virtually from coast to coast are aggressively reforming their education systems, they're creating more competition, more school choice, uh, merit pay, uh, voucher programs, all those sorts of things, one of the things that they're trying to do in order to hold teachers accountable is create real, meaningful evaluation programs. So anyway, so what happened in New York City was in order to get a deal, um, the union and the school district agreed to basically wipe the, the slate clean for teachers that have been under scrutiny. And uh, in, in New York City, the, the school system is operated by the mayor. Um, he, he oversees the school district. And his office has estimated that 7,000 teachers do not deserve to be in the classroom, and he would like them out. And so what it means is these 7,000 teachers now have their slate wiped clean, and it's going to take a minimum of two years for the school district to build the case against these people all over again um, in, in order to finally remove them from the classroom. So, Kyle, basically those those teachers that were sitting in that huge building they have just reading the newspaper and doing nothing, now we're going to have their slate wiped clean and start all over again? Well, they won't, correct, they won't necessarily go back in the classroom, um, but the process of, of firing them, of, of terminating their employment, will basically have to start all over again. And so a lot of those people will have uh, at least two more years in order uh, to be able to sit in that, that room. And that's, it's called the rubber rooms. Um, and, but then there's another program called the Absent Teacher Reserve, which is very similar. Um, but say, say your school was closed, or say your school said, well, you know, we have 18 teachers this year, but now, or next year we only need 15. Those extra three would go into what is called the Absent Teacher Reserve, which was a, a pool of teachers that was created through the collective bargaining process. And those people um, report for work every day. They receive the same salary that they received before, um, but they may be a substitute teacher, they may do clerical work, or they may just sit and do nothing. And, and it's these types of examples that I'm, I'm bringing to people on Fox or, or uh, showing uh, to, to viewers of Fox that it's just example after example where the teachers' union is putting the interests of the adults ahead of the interests of children. Well, how do you evaluate a teacher that sits in a room and does nothing, reads the paper, plays games, or sleeps? Well, you can't, and that's, that's, that's how the whole system is just so screwed up. Um, and so, I mean, I don't understand why they, uh, clearly we need that there needs to be fairness and people need to be able to defend themselves and all those sorts of things. I mean, along the same lines of, of what happens in the private sector. But at the same time, um, I mean, we're talking about children, and we're talking about, um, you know, making sure that we have a quality teacher, an effective teacher in front of every child in America. But sadly, that's not the agenda of the American Federation of Teachers and the National Education Association and their state affiliates. I mean, their agenda is to protect the quote-unquote rights and privileges of their members. 
And so that's why we see these examples come out of places like New York City. Or that's why we see in Chicago recently the, the union demanded a 30% pay raise. Um, I mean, that's why we see these examples that are just completely indefensible. Um, but when you have an organization, a very powerful, um, well-financed, well-politically uh, connected organization, when you see them largely running the show, um, that's why you're going to see these types of examples occurring over and over again. Our guest by phone is Kyle Olson from the Education in Action Group. You know, I, looking at these numbers, I mean, this just this is the kind of story that just drives you absolutely crazy. You're looking at 7,000 teachers off the hook, 2,671 teachers with at least one poor rating are not fired. The cost is going to be 100000 per teacher, including salary and benefits. This is going to cost the New York City taxpayers $700 million a year. This is that's insane. Right. And that's only New York. That's only New York. This is insane. And exactly. And that's why, you know, what we're trying to do at EAG um, through uh, talk radio shows, through Fox News, through our reporting and our writing is show these examples to to parents, to taxpayers, and say, you know, this this system is is just has the wrong priorities. Um, we recently did a, a short documentary film with Juan Williams, where we looked at the fight for school choice in Chicago, and we interviewed uh, the mayor Rahm Emanuel, where he said this system was not designed for children; it was designed for the adults. And here you've got, you know, uh, the, the former chief of staff to the president of the United States saying the public education system was not designed for the children. And you just have to ask yourself, well, then, if it wasn't designed for the children who are sitting in the seats every day, then who was it designed for? Um, and, it's, and so what I think is happening is you have people on the left and people on the right saying, you know, this, for a variety of reasons, uh, financially, academically, um, this system has got to change because it's not sustainable financially. Um, it's it's not performing the way it should academically, and it needs to go. You know, it needs to undergo major uh, a major overhaul. Well, wasn't there a superintendent uh, in Chicago, and I don't, don't remember her name, that either resigned or quit because she couldn't get anything done within the system? Um, I'm not aware of that, but I can tell you, I mean, from the administrators that we talk to around the country, I mean, there there is just a ton of frustration. Um, because it just it just is a it's an unsustainable system, um, and uh, our organization has been very active in in Wisconsin uh, with the reforms that have gone on there with with regard to especially collective bargaining, but school choice um, and those types of things. And we're about to issue a report, which actually we haven't talked about yet, um, where we are looking at basically the situation that school districts were in in the state of Wisconsin prior to Act 10, which was the which was the collective bargaining reform that you know, we saw play out on TV screens every day. Every day. Ago. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what we show is that because of collective bargaining, there was, this, there was this very acrimonious environment where, you know, you'd have the union fighting with the administrators and the school board, and the school board would be looking at these growing deficits, but because the union was you know, refusing to re renegotiate the contract, to reopen certain provisions of the contract. They weren't doing anything to help, and so the financial situation was just getting worse and worse. And it all came down to the power of, of that contract and, and the weight of the law, really, that that contract brought. And so as it happens today, um, because of Act 10 and because of the reforms that were passed, school districts now have a lot more flexibility to... Uh, to work directly with teachers to create smart HR programs uh, and policies, um, spend dollars more efficiently and more wisely. Um, and some of the things just simply mean switching health insurance carriers to save, you know, literally $3 million, um, things like that. And, uh, and that, to me, that is the difference that, that Scott Walker has brought to Wisconsin. Um, and it's those different types of policies that every legislature and uh, and school board should really be seriously looking at you know Kyle this is such a maddening story I mean it's it's you know obviously the unions are not putting the interests of the children first and uh, when, when we come back from the break I, I want to ask you a question about uh, and I was really surprised 
part of your film talking to the Chicago mayor, but I want to talk about him versus his ex-boss. We'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.